pain to it in some ways, and you'll see why in a sec. Um, and before I bring up this next guy, this is one of these next guys who kind of inspired it in some ways. Oh wait, is he leaving? Oh, he's got to use the restroom. I want to give him a sec. Fuck it, I'll go with another joke, and then because this one's like, this one I feel like it kind of catches his soul. Way anyway, you can go out on a cold day without a sweater. It's like, eh, I might get a little bit of cancer. Who knows? <laughs> And actually, on that note, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up my uh, my dear friend, a uh, guy who's actually been getting me a couple gigs for a while. And here's the thing: I want to preempt some horror, just so you know what you're getting yourself into. Everyone, give a quick round of applause for Mr. Scott Corcoran. Hello, hello. Well, when I thought about coming up here, I said, "Hey, Shane, doing an open mic? Why don't you come up here?" And Shane's like, "No, don't come." No, you can't do any, any of your material here. I didn't say People that. People are trying to eat. It's a, it's a joke, man. I gotta, gotta stretch the premise here. We will we'll assume that for the water, she goes, No, Scott, you can't come. I just told him to be half the filthy so fucker he said, you know it is. If anybody knows my set, I use a word. A four-letter word starts with C, ends with T. I'll use it a lot. It means... Pant. Woman. It means uh, a hole in a woman for putting in the pee pee and extruding the babies. Or sometimes the English people call a uh, woman acting men this, this word. But, like, I was going through my material with Shane and it was like the, the, the uh, spam sketch. Well, I could do the spam eggs and spam, spam sauce and spam, spam eggs, spam, 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 but just uh, something spam with uh, four letter words starts with C, ends with T. And I could do that, but it doesn't have much spam in it. Just a couple of spams. And yes, that's not very much. And no, no spam at all. I don't like spam. You'll have to do a clean act. So I said, all right, well, I got something I've been wanting to try. And I said, once you take away my pornography obsession, Sexual deviance and everything else I love. What is there left of Scott? What's there left? Well, I have my intellectual obsessions, and one of those is psychology. Now, if this gets me to be carrot top, because I need this prop right here, this salt shaker. <laughs> All right. If, if, I'm, if I'm carrot top or melon smashy boy or whatever, this is your fault, because I had to go to prop Gallagher. comedy. Yeah. So. Gallagher. I had forgotten that, man! I had forgotten that goddamn name! Until you put it back in my brain! I needed that space! Man, I needed that space in my brain! And you stuck Gallagher in my brain! You just became character. <laughs> okay. So anyway, I, for this, there's actually audience participation. All right, it's psychology. All four of us. It's, well, I just need one, just need one person, you, and, and come on up. I, oh, please, please. Yeah, just come, one. On. come on. Come on, come on. You, you spoke up. You gotta have this. It's not like we've got a lot. I, I show you the salt shaker. That's all I'm gonna do. I'm putting into your mind the idea of salt. This isn't a magic trick. I mean, I can't, I can't like, palm this salt shaker and pull it out of your... It's a clean show, right? Yeah. Ear. Pull it out of your ear. <laughs> not that clean. <laughs> so, so, so it's not really that, but I, I sorry, show, showing you salt, showing everybody. So now, I, perceptually, salt is hardwired into our brains. It's just hardwired into our brains. We know looking at it, we can see it, we know what it tastes like, just, just from looking at it. Now, now, that I've shown it to you, they've had things with people that don't have salt, the salt shaker's gone now, we don't have to look at that anymore. We're done with that. Um, they've shown that if you can't have salt on your food, that if you just pretend like you're putting salt on your food, then it will actually make your food taste salty. That's true. And I'll, I'll show this now. Now, if it, if it doesn't work on you, just tell me, because sometimes it just doesn't work. But it's a perceptual problem. First, imagine that you have a salt shaker again. Take a look at it again. Imagine that you have a salt shaker. Now, is it is it full? Is it full salt? Full salt? You? Yeah. All right. All right. You're imagining this. All right. Now, now, close your eyes so you're not getting any visual distractions. All right. Now, open your mouth and put the salt on your tongue. Just just put a little salt on your tongue. A little more. Are you tasting the salt yet? No. Do it. Do it some more. A little more. Maybe you have to shake it harder. I don't know what I'm doing. 
Shake it harder. Now stick your tongue out and shake harder. <laughs> now open your mouth and do it one more time while you're open your eyes and do it one more time while you're watching. <laughs> Thanks for being a good sport. <laughs> I was going to say, you could have just asked her to do that. <laughs> she would have said yes. This is too salty. <laughs> I'll shake it harder. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, knowing Christian, if you'd have just asked her to do that, she probably would have told you she needed props. Uh, I know. I know. <laughs> well, thanks for being a good sport there. All right, so now, like, and everybody knows that, uh, that, that I've already had my 15 minutes of fame, and this is the toboggan ride at the bottom. Uh, don't know how close I am, but I am performing an open mic on Monday at uh, Second Line. So, <laughs> so like, I, I went on Jerry Springer's show. First with my band, the Spo, it's at the videotape bus performing. Actually, one of our girls went on, our drummer went on, and then they had fo uh, footage of me performing. So they showed. And then, like, Later on, I became a booker for the Jerry Springer show, and I was the guy that would pick out the the guy that wears the uh, lingerie versus diaper boy. I, I would have to find the diaper boy, and it usually wasn't a diaper boy. It was just some like hipster star for uh, attention and publicity that would, for fifty dollars, go fly to Chicago on oh, the show's done, of course, and uh, become a laughing stock. The entire world. Matter of fact, in uh, Vinnie Van Gogh's, they had the Diaper Boys picture up there for, for years after the fact. Well, I got up there and, and uh, they, they said, Well, Scott, we need to do a great one. We need the best show ever. So well, I'm, I'm going then. This is, this is my show. Um, so I got uh, cast as the uh, boyfriend of the prostitute in two uh, shows, like My Pimple Let Me Go and Honey, I'm a Call Girl. And I tell you, it was some of the most fun I have ever had. And I was like, Nobody watches this show. I don't watch this show. Nobody watches this show. So I told my mom, I go, Mom, I'm gonna go be on Springer. She's like, don't wanna know. <laughs> the mom and dad, we have a don't ask, don't tell policy about my show business career, including the Spoets. They saw a, a videotape five minutes of my first show ever in Savannah, and they were like, just don't tell us. We're, we're out of here. Just, just, we don't care if you're an adult person, just, just don't tell us. We don't want to know. We, we don't want to know. I've had lots of poets show up at their parents' shows, not mine. No. So anyway, mom was kind of like that about Springer, and she's like, why would you want to do that? And I was like, 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we get there, and I don't know if you know anything about Chicago, but it was settled by Polish and... Um, Polish and German people mostly. Polish and German, and German women. And you put them up there in their Chicago, cold and winter, feed them potatoes, and have the like cold wind over against their skin. And there's not a lot of native beauty in Chicago. As far as <laughs> not, not a lot. And the strip clubs really suck. I mean, they, they, I mean, they're almost bikini clubs. They have to cover X amount of part of their titties, which they do with some kind of plastic flesh-looking stuff. It just, it's just terrible. It is, it's a shame to even call them you know, strip clubs. It's a, a crime against nature. So we show up with some prime, prime Atlanta strippers. Scott, myself, King's Poet, uh, Jay from Dick Delicious and Tasty Testicles, and a bunch of strippers. And we go hit the bars in Chicago. Now, if you've ever seen the movie uh, Kurt and Courtney, you ever, ever seen yeah. All right. you remember the guy with the blue mask? That was the yeah. LDG. That was the, our producer on Springer's name. Oh, shit. The Reverend Bud Green. Uh, he goes on a bunch of a bunch of pseudonyms. Al is his real first name. I, I have no idea to this day what his real name is. But he calls me every once in a while. He was in, he did produced on Playboy Sex Court for a while and uh, he been doing a bunch of shows. He performed on Springer, performed on a bunch of other things as the Reverend Bud Green. And he got into the, produ the producing game and he was really, really good at it. And uh, he, would, he would get musicians like me to get all of our, our attention-starved friends to come up on stage and, and uh, you know, and do just about anything. Because, you know, we, we can't really follow a script like actors, but we can get up and be natural around an audience, which is what, which is what they're looking for. So he's like, man, we got an early call. we got a 10, 10 a.m. we got to be at the studio. So y'all need to not go out tonight and, and stay in. 
And then we get an early call. And then right after the show, we're flying you home. We're like, no. No, we're going out. <laughs> we're going out probably all night. And, and uh, because you're not paying me but 50 bucks, and if you want to fire me right now, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. no. Just, just, you know, just come in at a breeze block. No, we're going out. We're going out. So we find out that in Chicago, the bars close at what? Midnight? Oh. Midnight! So they're all full of these, like, potato eating Pollock chicks. They close at midnight, and we're coming in, and uh, I don't know what it was, but the guy at the bar, we would come in and said, Y'all are going on Springer, aren't you? Well, yeah, yeah. It, it, two attractive guys, some strippers. You're, you're a Springer, you're a Springer contestant. But we get, we get a lot of those in here. So we went, we hardly bought drinks all night. People were buying us drinks. We popped from one place to another. And the final place we stayed, they locked the doors. The, our strippers got naked, danced up on the bar, and they fed us free drinks and shots till, I don't know, three, four in the morning. I don't know, not me, because of course I don't drink. Everybody knows, everybody knows that. But all, everybody else got free drinks and shots. And uh, so we finally, Drug, our, drug ourselves home. Just about the time we all got to sleep, it was like 8 o'clock, I guess. Yeah, I, mean, I might have gotten to sleep at 7. It might have been 6.30 or something. The phone rings, and it's Bud. Hey, Scott, get everybody up. It's time to get riding shine for the show. Hey there, everybody, everybody there? Well, yeah, well, almost everybody. Almost! Yeah, and uh, Jay is sleeping right next to me. Hey, uh, yeah, Jay, um... He went out at 5 in the morning looking for heroin. He hasn't been back yet. <laughs> so, of course, he like, gets, runs over the... Where, where, where is... Oh, just got back in, man. You just, you just saw... He just, just walked back in. <laughs> five minutes. Give, give him five more minutes. So we come on the Springer Show. They, they won't let you wear your own clothes. Absolutely will not let you wear your own clothes. Won't let you wear your own shoes. They strip you down, then they put you, put you in wardrobe, which I didn't know why they did that, because my clothes were basically the same clothes. I, I had kind of dressed for Springer. It was basically the same clothes, but they had to pick them out for you. And then we get up on stage, and, uh, and Bud's like, man, you really got to hit it. But don't throw any chairs. I said, why not? Oh, I was going to throw a chair. We, we, we threw chairs in the... In the rehearsal. Oh yeah, I forgot that. We, heard, we rehearsed the bit. We got scripts and rehearsed the bit. And I have still got my script because I am the smart one. I stole one of the stripper scripts, put it in my bag, and then handed mine in. And then when he did that, we're one script. We're missing a script. None of these can leave. Nobody can leave here. And the stripper's going, I don't know where it went. I have no idea. And I'm like, it's in my fucking bag. That's where it went. No, you you saw me. I handed mine in. So can I leave? So finally, after an hour of uh, 20 questions to strippers, um, they finally decided that, that uh, the script had been dropped down some sort of black hole, and I still have it. But anyway, uh, so we went on the show, and uh, it, it, it took a while for them to get me out. And, and they'd already had a couple of fights, fights before that, and I was saying, man, eh, this, you know, I can see it up on the monitor. Oh, this is this is looking this is looking pretty good. I, I'm not going to do what we planned. I'm just going to go out and hit him. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I walk out, and, and instead of my lines, I, I hand the girl a card. Amanda, this is for you. Hey, Jerry, this is for you. Pow! <laughs> I had a cut over top of his head. He was totally like not not expecting me to hit him that hard because we had like like uh, you know, sissy punch during the <laughs> preliminaries. And uh, so, so I, I like, I like laying him out. So then, like, we get to the second thing where he's supposed to fight me, and when he gets up to punch me, I throw a fucking chair at him. <laughs> and it dies that. Then the, 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 the bouncers come on, and Steve gets on me, and I like pick him up, and I'm like walking Steve around. <laughs> my back. And, and you see, I'm not lying because it's all on YouTube for, for the for the ages. But anyway, that's my 15 minutes of fame, and I guess my 15 minutes of show. So I'll give it back. Okay. I don't know. They might be. <laughs> but I wasn't performing then. I was already done. I was bragging at that point. I, I had relinquished the mind.
Luke's going to come in and see him with the dinner. <laughs> oh, that's great. I get all the blame. <laughs> By the way, like, the, you, I didn't know you didn't drink alcohol. I, n I don't drink. Not, not since. Shocking thing not ever. since 1990. <laughs> I was like, what? It's it's the most. It's the I, I, I quit alcohol and drugs in 1990, and and it's it's the thing I'm most notorious for in the world. I have friends that shoot heroin into their fucking eyeballs, and I could do that six days a week and not be as notorious as I am for not drinking. You know, the what? one thing I was thinking about is like, wow, he doesn't drink or do drugs. We should send him to a public school and put him in front of children. <laughs> it's just like, kids, did you get the message not to do uh, uh, drugs and alcohol? Yeah, but now we hit TVs and hookers. <laughs> and on the subject of TVs and hookers, I'm going to bring up a, a, a man who's right over there. Everyone give a warm welcome to Mr. Steve Clark. <laughs> 